Are you curious about the secrets hiding in ancient towers? Rising over the picturesque village of Kalala in Cantimeo, the Kalala Round Tower isn't just an architectural marvel, it's a symbol of history and a wellspring of folklore and tall tales passed down through generations. Built in the 12th century, this tower stands as one of the finest examples of its kind, reaching a height of over 25 metres. But its purpose wasn't just to look impressive. Round towers like this one were primarily built by early Christian monks between the 9th and 12th centuries. These towers served multiple purposes. They were bell towers, places of refuge during Viking raids, and symbols of the monks' wealth and influence. The old people around here have their own stories, attributing the tower's construction, it's said maybe to a legendary stonemason, could even be the mythical Gobon Ser. He was said to possess supernatural skills able to create structures that would last for centuries. And for sure, this one has. One local tale speaks of the tower being built in just one night by the Gabon Ser himself, using stones brought from distant lands by enchanted horses. And just as he's finishing the tower, the villagers of Kalala, paranoid that he would create an even better tower elsewhere, actually, steal away the ladder while he's completing the tower. So finding himself stranded, the Gobon Ser shouts down to a fella passing by, an Amadon, as it's called. And your man says up to him, what are you at up there? Gobon Ser shouts back down, I'm stuck you Amadon, I'm hardly here for the crack, for the good of me health, will you help me out? The Amadon shouts up again, isn't it easier to throw down two stones than to throw up one? wise enough for an Amadon. So it dawned on the Gobon Ser that tearing down the tower was his only way out of this predicament, and he started firing down blocks left and right. The tower holds a really special place in the hearts of local people, including in my own heart. On stormy nights, they say, you can hear the whispers of monks chanting ancient prayers within its walls. Can you imagine it? that beautiful Gregorian chant echoing across the water below. Historically, the construction of round towers like this one involved intricate planning and considerable resources. The base of the tower is wider than the top and that provides stability. The entrance, as you can see, is elevated and that's likely to offer protection during attack. Inside, wooden floors divided the tower into multiple le levels, each accessible by ladders. The monks who built these towers weren't just architects, but they were also guardians of knowledge. They preserved precious manuscripts and artefacts, safeguarding them from Viking invaders. During attacks, they would retreat into the tower pulling up the ladders and waiting out the danger. It's believed there is also a souterrain or an underground passage leading from this tower to the nearby Anglican uh, graveyard and that's attached to the cathedral there. And the base of that church actually is really interesting all by itself because that's actually said to date back to the time of St. Patrick itself. The souterrain there, the tunnel, it's all overgrown now, but you can still see steps descending down into it beneath the weeds and briars. The cathedral that stands there, it's a new thing. It was erected in like 1670 <laughs> by Bishop Thomas Otway, using stones from the ruined uh, medieval Catholic cathedral that had previously stood on the same site. Back to the tower. In the early 19th century, it wasn't without its own drama. It was struck by lightning and it caused some damage. But the locals were always very uh, aware of preserving the tower and they went to great lengths to repair it over the centuries. So it has stood the test of time. 
There are lots and lots of stories associated with the tower. Here's a favourite of mine. One night, long, long ago, a man walking past the tower heard a voice saying, there's a pot of gold hidden under the 99th step of the tower. So he headed off home, got his shovel and his axe, began to dig. He was so consumed by his task that he didn't even notice that a robber had entered the tower behind him. The thief threw a knife, killing him on the spot. Now, how we know this part of the story is a bit of a mystery to me because the man's body was never found. And that led locals to actually believe that the tower was haunted. Don't go near it. If you enjoyed this glimpse into the tower and its history, please join me on The Sleepy Scholar, where we'll dive into the mysteries of the tower with our new story, The Mason's Riddle. And it features the gifted Gobon Ser himself. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube and let your dreams take you on a journey through time. Remember, The Sleepy Scholar is also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the podcast places. So pick whichever platform suits you best. And please do share it with your friends and maybe somebody who needs a good night's sleep as much as I do. Jay Shiv Sloan.